Hey everyone, my name is Tony and welcome back to the channel. So making a hand brow in SketchUp can be a little bit tricky and challenging, but using an extension like Profile Builder can make the process a little bit easier. So in this video, I'll show you a few quick tips to create a smooth, continuous hand brow with SketchUp. Let's dive in. So this is going to be our scene for this exercise. We have a staircase that is rising up multiple floors and I already have my post and balusters ready so we can start to create an assembly out of these components. Now to avoid the video from being too long, we'll go through this process pretty quickly, but I'll link a previous video in the description where I create an assembly in greater detail. So let's start by opening the assembly dialog and I'm going to create a new assembly. Let's just call this metal stairs. Feel free to put a description if you need to, but we're going to get started by adding a component. And this is going to be our post. Pick our component from the group and you can see on the preview what our assembly looks like. And for an even better demonstration, we'll apply that to the simple square path. So from here, we're going to activate life edit. So now that we have our assembly, we're also going to set this to be four feet apart. This is the distance between each post, which will give us something like this. And at this point, I'm also going to add my railing. So we'll go into profile. Let's call this metal railing. And instead of picking from the model, we'll create one with the profile dialog. So we're going to look for a circle profile and now we can set the diameter. So we're just going to set this to one inch and hit OK. So now we get that railing at the very bottom of the assembly. First, I'm going to move this up maybe six inches. I'm then going to duplicate railing two, and I'm going to set this at 36 inches. And just to be safe, be sure to check global for both. So when we take a look at the path for our stairs, I have one that is not entirely continuous. It goes up one level, but the second one, you can see that it runs from the very bottom level all the way to the very top. And these two examples are going to help us solve a couple of issues you might run into with Profile Builder. Now, before we add the assembly to our stairs, let's add materials in a way that it will stick to the assembly. For the post, we need to add it directly to the component. So we'll go inside this group and add the material. For the metal railing, we need to go to the assembly dialog and select our material from the drop down option. So now we can go to our stairs, select the path and add our assembly. Now, let me show you why global is so important. For example, if I select my assembly and I disable global, you can see that the railing starts to exceed some of the posts and that's not something you really want to see. So this helps everything stay together to where it needs to be. Now, one thing that is very common, you might want this last post to be very close to that last riser and the landing. And there's a few issues you might run into when adjusting the advanced junctions. So the very first step is we need to get a post on this corner. So you want to make sure that the info options for left and right junctions are checked on your post component, which we've done here. So the reason we don't see a post here is because the minimum junction angle is 60 degrees and it doesn't match the angle of our path. So I'm going to activate live edit and I'm going to change this to 20 degrees and you can see that change update on our assembly. Keep in mind that this path is considered a right vertical junction and the one on the other side is a left vertical junction. So now another thing you might want to do is move this post a little bit to the right or maybe a little bit to the left. So the obvious setting to adjust would be your junction setback. So let's say I add a six inch setback to my junction. You're going to get this situation right here. And this is something that usually you want to avoid. You don't want these two posts to be very close to each other. 
So regardless of the value that you add here, you can see that this can be a very common issue. So in able to solve this, you need to activate advanced junctions. And what we're going to do is use a negative junction to cancel out one of the posts. And because this is a right junction, we will go into right post junction and we'll move this six inches. So we get two posts, one right after the other. You can adjust this even to be four. So it's a little bit closer. And now we can use a negative junction to get rid of this post. So to get rid of this, we'll focus on the pre right junction setback and add a negative one. And once I hit enter, you can see that it gets rid of that other post. So this is a combination of settings that you can adjust to solve that bit of an issue. So we've got this correct for our right vertical junction. Now let's do the same to the left. You can also use smart path select to select your path, select one edge, then select the next and apply our assembly. And right away, we notice a couple of issues. We notice one here. So to fix this, we're going to have to adjust the pre and post left junctions. So let's change pre to four inches and post to, to minus one inch. And that takes care of that. But now we notice that we have something else here. And this might be a case where you have to save as your assembly and then make these adjustments just so the stair railing on the entire stairs looks correct. So obviously this looks a little different. So we just need to reverse the pre and post right junctions. So I'll have a four here and minus one at pre. And that should solve that problem. So now that looks correct. Now for this next part, I'm actually going to make a couple adjustments to my path just so we can avoid any further issues. We'll bring this over to here as well as on this other side. So now that I've made those changes, let's again select the path and apply our assembly. And now this looks just about right. As you can see, these are my pre and post left and right junction settings. And you can see that the railing is adapting very well to the path. So while it's possible to create a continuous stair railing, it's just not possible to have 100% control of where your posts are positioned. So you may be a little bit limited if you want to be extremely precise with every element in your railing. For example, if I take this path, which is continuous across this entire stairs, this is what I end up with. Now, if you can see by this example, obviously it's possible to create a one continuous stair railing. But if you want to create a continuous railing assembly that allows for precise control of post position at both vertical and horizontal junctions, you're definitely going to run into some challenges. So I recommend you avoid combining junctions in the same assembly path. So you simply break up the assembly path and control each variable individually. So one other thing you might notice is if you zoom in close at your railings where the sloped part meets the horizontal part, it looks and feels a little bit disproportionate. This is pretty ideal to happen, but if you want the profile to stay consistent at the radius we've set, activate live edit, open the profile dialog. And right here, we're going to change extrude mode from normal to follow me. This is going to follow the follow me format of the SketchUp's default function. And you can see that actually changed on the bottom railing. So if we go into our second railing and make that update, you can see how that changed. So for the final step, we need to add our balusters to the stairs, which is the vertical supports between the railings. And we're going to use this component to create our assembly. So first we add a new assembly we can call this balusters. Next, we're going to add a new component and add this component from our model. Let's also build the assembly so we have a preview. Now, obviously we want this to be a little bit closer to each other. So we're going to change this to two inches. And while you're following these steps, make sure your axis is in the middle of the component. And that's pretty much all that we need. So now that we have this assembly, we're going to use it as a sub assembly for our stairs. We're back into our assembly and we'll go into spam. 
and we're going to change this to sub assembly and we'll select the assembly we created earlier as our model and once you add it you can see that it works exactly as it should you can see from the preview how our assembly looks like but i'm going to select it here and make an update and we get that right away so this looks pretty good and that's going to be all for this video this was a requested tutorial in the comment section so be sure to drop your questions down below and we might turn it into a video as always don't forget to like share and subscribe and i'll catch you guys in the next video